Hello, everyone. This is Renee Rentmeister. I'm the creator and executive producer of the Cooking Without Looking TV show and podcast. And today we have a guest that I'm sure you're going to love. If you love pancakes or anything to do with syrup, you're going to love meeting Annie uh, Obasi, right? Is that Obasi, it? yes. Obasi, okay. Yeah. Obasi. <laughs> Annie Obasi. And um, where are you from, Annie? I am from uh, Atlanta, but I've been in Atlanta for about 13 years. I'm not actually from Atlanta. I'm from New York and born and raised in Mississippi. Ah, okay. Okay. Well, yeah. tell us a little bit about your blindness journey. Oh, okay. Well, my blindness journey, I think, started when I was younger, but never diagnosed. You know, I know I had what they call a lazy eye. I can't pronounce the uh, medical term for it, but it was never corrected. And I started losing, having problem with that. And I guess when I was around about 26 years old, I started having problem with my eyes and went and had it checked out and uh, was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa. And from then on, you know, I lost my license and had to uh, go through, you know, mobility training and, um, um, you know, uh, technology training for to adopt to not being able to see very well. So during that period of time, I had to give up my license which was very difficult. Your driver's and license? I, yes, yes, driving license. Oh. And that was difficult uh, because at that time I had to, I was living in uh, rural New York at the time, um, at, around in the area between Rochester, New York and Buffalo. So up, up towards Binghamton and all that area. So it was, that was it was difficult to for transportation, so I relied on friends and family. And at the time, I still had a job. I was working for the state of New York as a um, at, the, at the time they the title was a mental hygiene therapist assistant. So I had to get to work every day. And at the time, I had one or two children I had to take care of, and um, you know I had to keep my keep my job, you know, to, right, to raise right. my children, you know. So um, it was very difficult. I, you know, managed to get, you know, get rides to work, uh, get rides to shopping. Uh, mobility helped me to, you know, maneuver around, getting, learning how to take the buses. And like I said, the rural area, we didn't have buses. So I decided then, well, you know what, you need to do something to improve yourself and um, get a better education. So I moved from the rural area to Rochester, New York, I think was in 1990. Uh, I went to college at um, Rochester Institute of Technology. I was admitted there uh, for, accepted there, not admitted, accepted there for uh, uh, a de degree in social work. So. I did that, but before that, I went to um, Finger Lake Community College and got my associate degree in human service. And then 1990, I went to Rochester Institute of Technology and uh, got my associate degree in uh, social work. So um, I moved there. It was a lot easier for me because I could, you know, take the bus or you know, at the time they had something in Rochester called lift line, and I would use that as transportation to and from classes. Um, I moved on campus, which was uh, accessible because they had buses and things. So that made it a lot easier for me, um, you know, and with the children, it, 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 it you know. <laughs> so <laughs> I... I managed to do that, and uh, after that, I think I retired from the state of New York in 19, I think in 1988, and uh, after that, I did go to Rod, uh, Rochester Institute of Technology, and uh, after I 
did that. I uh I think in nineteen ninety five after I graduated with my um uh, my um social work degree, I worked for a nonprofit organization uh for about twelve years and then in nineteen um oh no in two thousand two thousand and Oh, 2006, I decided, okay, I retired from there and moved to Atlanta. So this is how I, you know, came to Atlanta. Ah, well, but, I'm, in Albany. <laughs> I'm in Albany, Georgia. Have you ever been here? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's so, I moved here uh, during the pandemic and uh, my grandchildren, my daughter are here. And so um, I I love the um, uh, the park with uh i can't think of his name the famous blind pianist oh okay i can't okay. i don't I, yeah. I can't remember it either yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at any <laughs> rate <laughs> at yeah any, um so how did you get into pancake syrup oh uh, you know that is that is an interesting question um my daughter came over to visit one day and um she I don't know if she had some pancakes or she had some pancakes she wanted to make at her house. And she asked me if I had uh, some syrup. And I said, uh, no, I don't. But I have some syrup that I made. She said, you made syrup, I, pancake syrup? I said, yes. And I had it in a little, uh, one of those little uh, quart jars. Yeah. So... Um. Um, I pulled it out and gave it to her. She said, I didn't ever know you made syrup. I said, I always made syrup when you guys were small, whenever I didn't have uh, money to buy the the stovepot syrup. I said, I always made syrup. She said, I don't remember that. I said, well, I did. I, my mom taught me. You know, when we grew up in Mississippi when we didn't have um, pancake syrup because I grew up on a sharecropper's farm out in Mississippi. So we didn't have pancakes. Most of the time we made our food, uh, you know, our canned oh. food, you know, that type of thing. Uh, so she would always make the pancake syrup. And then I remember in mornings when we didn't have uh, uh, syrup or molasses to put on our pancakes. We, a lot of time we had hot cakes at the time. Uh, she would have me make the, she taught me how to make the, um, the sugar syrup, you know, to put on the pancakes. So well, Danny, how do, how do you make syrup? What do you take the sugar and you just sort of like melt it down? Um, yeah, you melt it down and let it brown a little bit and then you put water into it. Yeah. You know, but, uh, and let it cook into it, you know, go into a syrup. It, it depends on how much syrup you want to make, two cups, three cups, four cups, of syrup, uh, sugar that you put in and then you let it cook down um, and uh, put water into it, two to three, maybe, oh, I would say probably four cups of water to, you know, how much of a, uh, sugar you put in and let it cook down into syrup, you know. But my mom taught me how to, we would use the, uh, like Domino's uh, white sugar and it let it brown and then uh, pour the water into it and let it cook down into syrup. Well, that sounds but, like uh, it would have tasted better than the store-bought stuff. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I think for hers, when she made it, she would sometimes put butter into it, you know, make the butter pancakes syrup to it. But um, what we did was we put a twist to it. So my daughter... I said, well, can you make uh, different flavors with this? And I, I said, using what? I thought she might have been using, um, um, you know, flavor for syrup, like vanilla or whatever. And oh. she said, no, something like uh, fruits, like uh, um, uh, lemon and mint and... <laughs> Oh, right wow. now. <laughs> something like that so I had to come up with um a recipe on uh take extracting the the um the juices from the fruits and put in there and uh, one of the ones 
syrup that we she came up with was jalapeno. And she said, jalapeno. And I was like, jalapeno? She said, yeah, jalapeno. She said, jalapeno. People are using jalapenos for a lot of things. So um, I think it was that a Saturday evening or a Sunday. I don't remember what day. But anyway, she... I, I couldn't believe it. She tore, got in the car, tore out, went to the store, went went to the store, came back. She had all these different fruit, mint, um, lemon, pineapple, jalapeno. Wow. And she brought lime back. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. So, <laughs> 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 so I got uh, the next day, I think it was on a Monday. Uh, I'm not sure, but Anyway, she, um, I got into the kitchen and trying to figure out how I'm going to, you know, get juice this, uh, juice to be able to make the pancake syrup. But anyway, I did without giving you my secret recipe. <laughs> I'll have I to did. die if you I, tell I, me, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I, I managed to come up with it and, uh, you know, we tried it. We, you know, I t showed her what I had did. I think I had did by two jars of each one. And she came by and I said, I did it. I did it. She says, what do you mean? You did it. I did it. I said, I turned the, the fruit into uh, the different flavors of pancake search you want. But it was all great except for the lime. And uh, after that, she took the, took the syrup and, um, she tried it out on her friends at the time she was working for Atlanta Police Department and she tried it out on them and her <laughs> dad was in his training development programs and uh she took it and she tried it out on um introduced it to uh some of the uh, members of that program and we had little uh tasting parties here at the house it was a great hit so it started from that, and I think that was in 19, 2016, oh, and wow. 2018, we, um, you know, um, we, you know, started a business, got, got our uh, license for it. Right now, we are at a shared kitchen where we make the syrup, and, uh, you know, I think it's called... It's on Urban Street here in Atlanta. I, I think it's 60 Urban Street is where the Shirt Kitchen is. And uh, right now we have a website. And the website is Annie's Gourmet Serve. H-T-T-P www.anniesgourmetserve.com And that's where we found our syrup. And we're also on Facebook, on the Facebook slash Annie's Gourmet Serp. Facebook.com Annie's Gourmet Serp. So and have you, you what's, find us there. Pardon what's me? like the what's like the biggest company or, or organization or whatever who who have really latched on to your syrup. Uh, by the way, I'm intrigued by the jalapeno one because <laughs> honestly, to be honest with you, Annie, I'm not a syrup person, but I had to be with my grandchildren and with my daughter. So mm -hmm. But the jalapeno one was like, wow, I can see that on ham. Oh, yes. And that was one of the things that people, our customers started doing was to take the jalapeno or the lemon and uh, base their ham and uh, fish with it, especially the fish with the lemon uh, or the jalapeno and, you know, spread that on your... Uh, on your ham and um, you know, baste it and roast it and it was really good. They even put it on their steaks. What so about that, garlic pancake syrup? <laughs> oh no, I don't <laughs> or know. I don't bacon, know. <laughs> bacon pancake syrup. What do you say, Annie? <laughs> know about all that. <laughs> <laughs> you you've got my imagination just flying away here, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I know. Uh, but what was yeah. wrong with the lime syrup? Why didn't the lime syrup work and the lemon did? I think it was too uh pulp too or yeah, the lime. Yeah. Too much? Too much, yeah. Yeah. 
it kind of uh, turned the syrup into a jail like. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you had lime jelly syrup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two things yeah. in one. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the taste was a little too uh, pokey, you know. Pungent? Uh, Conscience, yeah, that's the word, yeah. Oh, and the, the piano player I was thinking of was Ray Charles. Ray Charles. Ray Charles, yes, 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 yes. Well, well um, tell us, so how many flavors do you have now, Annie? Uh, we have four flavors. The four flavors are lemon, mint, pineapple, and jalapeno. And what, what is the most common use for them? Because the other ones don't seem like you'd put them on pancakes. What are the well, most common uses you find? Yeah, the most common, but also you could use the jalapeno on uh, probably on ice cream because I noticed there is someone in, in Atlanta has developed a, a jalapeno ice cream. So I hear, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, Annie. I, I got the <laughs> jalapeno syrup. I can almost, I can get on board with that. But the jalapeno ice cream, I'm not certain. But um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah. Um, the lemon. Um, oh, what was the question you asked, Dina? Because I don't. What are, What are the most common uses of your syrup now? Like oh, the most common use. Yeah, the most common uses are pancake. Uh, base in your ham, um, put it on your cakes. Uh, we've tried it on uh, cornbread, you know, uh, uh, oh, spreading it on your cornbread. Um, what other? Oh, you can use it to sweeten in your drinks, like your cocktails or whatever drinks oh. that you're going to use. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> what cocktail would you put this in? Which one, uh, which syrup for which cocktail? Oh, I'm not even sure because I'm not a person that drinks and, and, and mix cocktails and things, but I think you could put it in your um um what do you call it? Oh martini? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, you know, whatever drinks you want to because I know there's a a drink, I don't remember what the name of it. I'm not a, a person that drinks alcohol except for wine every once in a while. Sure. Um, yeah. But, um, you know, there's a green drink you use. That's probably good. The jalapeno with it. Cream de mint? Cream de mint. Cream de mint, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you probably could use the mint one for that one. Yeah. You know. um, just... Yeah, you know, I would say experiment with it. You know, the same as I did with the syrup. You know, making the syrup, experiment with it, see how you like the taste. And I still do that uh, with the syrup around the house. We experiment with different foods and to try it on. Uh, you can put it on your ice cream, especially the mint. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Do you have um, any new flavors on the horizon that you've been working on, or is that top secret at this point? Um, <laughs> no, not really a top secret. We have been thinking about doing a uh, vanilla bean. Ooh, that <laughs> does sound good. That yeah, great on cake or your or your pancakes or, or yeah, whatever. yeah. Well, that is the flavor that we're thinking about trying next, and uh, so you can um, you know, see we are on TikTok, so you can see. Uh, some uh, videos popping up on that and we are on uh, Instagram so um, you know you can see our ads on that and and you know just click on the ads and it'll send you straight to our website and you know if you have any questions or anything you can you know also contact me or my daughter in Nevada directly you know um, oh yeah so. yeah well, yeah. you know what? You're going to be on our TV show, but tell us about your uh, cornbread pudding. Uh, give us the lowdown on your cornbread pudding. What are, What's that recipe? Oh, okay. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay, my cornbread pudding is a uh, recipe that I came across, and I never, and I, I grew up in the South, and I never knew, heard of our uh, grandpa. 
uh, cornbread pudding before. So I came across this recipe um, on the website once, and I was like, wow, I need to try that. And I, you know, gather, um, it was on a video, so I wrote down the, um, or memorized the, um, the uh, recipe and wrote down the ingredients. And I'm like, wow, this is simple and it should be easy to make. So I wrote it down and this is what the, um, the cornbread pudding is. And there's other different variations of it. And I got the recipe for those and going to try that. Uh, but this one is like kind of like a pudding. And uh, I got and I made it for uh, Thanksgiving dinner. So, um, you know, it, it's just a recipe where you would take a uh, cream, um, two cans of cream corn, a large bag of uh, kernel whole corn, and uh, put it in a kind of like a baking sheet. Uh, depending on how large you want it, nine by what by nine, twelve, nine by whatever, eight or whatever pan you're gonna use, and uh, you know, uh, spread the uh corner kernel corn in the in the pan, and then put the <clears throat> um oh well first of all let me tell you you have to have the kernel there are two cans of corn kern uh cream corn. A bag of corn, of corn, and uh, one stick of butter. Um, mm, probably about a one fourth cup of honey or a cup of honey, and uh, some uh, cinnamon. Put about a teaspoon of cinnamon in there, and then you take uh, Jiffy Mix or or uh, or maybe whatever cornbread mix that you use. Uh, you could use um uh oh uh, what is it? Um oh god, I can't even think of but anyway, uh <laughs> gluten free gluten free cornmeal is oh you know, yeah, yeah. Like, which which I use quite a bit of. Uh you can use that. So you take the <clears throat> the um the bag of corn and you know just spread it around in the in the um pan and then uh Open your two cans of um, cream corn and pour that in there. And after you do that, you take the stick of butter and cut it and spread it uh, along um, into the uh, into the pan. Just spread it around on the pan, and you put your cinnamon in there. Well, first of all, you got to do you got to put your honey in there. Put your honey in there and mix that up in there. Put your cinnamon in, mixed up, and then. Spread um, just kind of like spread your uh, your butter all over the top of the of the corn, and after you do that, you take the cornbread. Don't mix the cornbread mix, um, and spread that on top, and stick it in the oven for about mm, 40, 30 to forty five minutes, and let it go get golden brown, and take it out, and it is delicious. I couldn't believe it. So that is the recipe I am going to be doing on the show on the 15th. Um, oh, it sounds it sounds so amazing. But you know what? As you were talking, once again, mm -hmm. I thought of an idea. What about okay. cinnamon syrup? <laughs> <laughs> or cinnamon you know, syrup? We we already did that. Tried it. It didn't work out. All it the didn't cinnamon. taste good? <laughs> no. Okay, well, it never mind. It tasted good, but all the cinnamon kind of like settled in the bottom of the syrup or something. We couldn't figure oh. out. How to get it. it looked like you had dirt in your syrup. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, oh. yeah, I've already tried that. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Never mind. So. We'll we'll hold out for the vanilla syrup. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Or yeah. pumpkin syrup. Pumpkin. Oh uh, yeah, you know when we <laughs> uh, we went to when we went to uh Georgia University um uh, and uh to get the syrup tested um our the uh professor there that we spoke with and met with he uh mentioned the same thing he said you know what if you come up with some pumpkin syrup give me a call let me know because he was telling me about. <laughs> <laughs> Another young lady um, 
came to his office and had, and he still had the syrup there with him and showed it to us. Oh my gosh. She made some pumpkin syrup. It looked really good, but for some reason, he said she never showed back up, you know, at Aww. to um to get the uh get get the syrup on the market. So well, you know uh, what? It sounds it like it sounds like you've never let your blindness get in your way. What what keeps you going? Um, what keeps me going? Well. Actually, when I first found out that I was visually impaired, well, what kept me going was my children and um, making sure that they had a pretty much happy, you know, life and, and that I can provide a future for them being uh, visually impaired and, um, you know, not wanting to to depend on others and to uh, show uh, the world that blindness doesn't hold people back from, you know, reaching their goals or their dreams or providing for themselves, you know, because uh, the, a lot, most of the things that I've accomplished in my life, like uh, my education uh, moving to her here in Atlanta and buying my first house, all of those things was accomplished after my blindness, not before. Because before my blindness, I was stumbling around in the world and not knowing where I wanted to go, and um, you know, not knowing how to accomplish my dreams and goals until uh, until the diagnosis you know, of retinitis pigmentosis. And even though, um, you know, it, it has been a hinder in transportation and otherwise, but in accomplishing my dreams and my goals, uh, raising my three children pretty much alone. And most of my children has, um, they have having a just life. My son lives in New York. He has four kids. I'm, I'm a grandmother. And he has four girls. Uh, they're all is entering college. And um, my daughter is, you know, well accomplished. Like I said, she was at the police department here. She just retired. And she's starting her own business and working for um, uh, family department, uh, family service here, you know, uh, right. contracting right. out her business. And my uh, oldest son, he he's in... Um, um, in uh, Florida, and he was in the military in the Navy, and to recently, and he also work continued to works for the Navy as a honorable discharge person. Yeah, so like I said, you know, um, that's you know what, what keep that's what keep me going, and 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 not not to you know, just sit back and feel sorry for myself, but to show the world that blindness is not, doesn't hold you back from being who you want to be in the world. You know, someone told me a couple of weeks ago that they said that if they hadn't gone blind, they wouldn't have accomplished as much as they had. <laughs> exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, that's that's exactly the opposite of what our society teaches us, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it no. is. <laughs> but but it made a lot of sense. I can I can actually understand that because it's like one more challenge, and it's like, darn it, you know, I'm gonna get there. Right, right. And 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 not only that, you know, um, I had kind of like a small business in New York, and even visually impaired, I worked uh, sometimes through. I had my business. I had. Um, and I did volunteer work. I think I, yeah, I, I volunteer work. I was in, um, what is it, the AmeriCorps there. Oh, yes, I did, yes. Yeah, I did that during the period of time of being visually impaired. And I um, I also worked at the, uh, worked for the Arkham Monroe County uh, as a residential council 
for the 12 years before I retired. So I was doing all those things at one time and raising teenage kids. You know? Oh my so. God. The raising of teenage kids was a real challenge, not the blindness, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Annie, so. it's been an amazing pleasure to meet you again. Please um, go through all of your information so that all of us can get some of Annie's gourmet syrup. Okay. Okay. I will. All right. So, so what is it? Tell us your website again. Okay. My website is http colon slash slash www dot Annie's Gourmet Syrup dot com. There you go. And uh, are people able to call you for orders as well? Um, they can email me. Um, if they call, I can and they I can direct them to the website because we're taking orders from the website. Okay, okay, great, great. All right. Well, thank but, you. But yeah, but for those I know a lot of your people are community, I mean, uh visually impaired and some people might not be able to maneuver the website. I will take their orders, you know probably, you know, from call, phone call. So what's they can your email, call. Annie? What's your email so they can email My, you? Okay. The email is Annie's, oh, oh, well, wait. Annie's Gourmet Serp. That's A-N-N-I-E-S Gourmet Serp at gmail.com. There you go. That's easy enough to remember. Well, yeah. Annie, thank you so much for introducing us to your gourmet syrup. And you know what? I'm going to be up later tonight thinking about all the different syrups that can be done. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you might be able to get some weird um, answers from me later, but um, <laughs> it, okay. it, sounds, it sounds so amazing. I want to try the jalapeno most definitely. But oh, okay. <laughs> again, this has been our Cooking Without Looking TV show podcast. I'm Renee Rentmeester. And if you want to reach out to us and if you want to listen to Annie's show, um, it's at www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. And um, if you want to uh, go to our YouTube channel, we have a Cooking Without Looking YouTube channel. And um, we also have our podcast and you can listen to our podcast anywhere you get your favorite podcast. So thank you again, Annie. You're welcome. Glad to have, have, have been on the show. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being with us. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.